Architect here in the Meraki offices in San Francisco and today we're going to be looking at a patient first, cloud first webinar with Next Stage Medical who are fantastically on the line and we're going to be talking with them in a little bit. Well. We're here with Brian and Clay uh, from Next Stage Medical and also Kat from our uh, Meraki webinar team and we'll be answering your questions as we go through today's session. So let's move on and have a look at today's agenda. We're going to have a little bit about Cisco Meraki. I'm going to recap how Meraki became to be part of Cisco, a little bit about their ten technology and cloud managed networking before I hand over to Brian and Clay who are going to talk in more detail about Next Stage as well as Meraki and Next Stage and how the Meraki technology has been put to great use there. We also follow that up with a live dashboard demonstration of the Meraki corporate network and discuss how some of the features and functionality that Next Stage have used in their deployment can be applied in your environment as well. Finally, we'll leave a little bit of time for question and answers at the end, as well as a recap of the product families that are available. Now, as I said at the very beginning, we'd love to hear your questions as we go through our We'd like to try and keep this as sort of interactive and live as possible. Obviously, there's the uh, time that we have today. We only have an hour, so we're not going to probably be able to go through absolutely everything that you want to hear. So make sure you let us know what you're interested in, and you can do that by asking in the Q&A box. So at various points throughout today's session, we'll try and stop and answer your questions, and especially in the live demonstration, we'll want to go through and show you the things that you're interested in. Now, the great thing about attending a Meraki webinar is if you are an eligible IT professional, you'll receive a free 802.11n AP with a three-year cloud management license. This is a fantastic offer because not only are you get free access point, but you'll start to uh, be able to use the Meraki technology and try all of the things that we're going to be showing you in today's session for yourself. Now, eligible Ability details can be found at meraki.cisco.com forward slash free AP. But the most important thing is that you need to call us to confirm your shipping information. If you don't do this, then we are unable to ship you your free access point. We send out a lot of access points to all sorts of places, and we really want to make sure they get to the right person, they get to you, and you're able to use the technology. So we don't want to send it out until we have confirmed all those details. Now, the contact details for the person you need to talk to will be in your webinar reminder email. However, if for some reason you have lost it, the spam filter has eaten it, eaten it, or you just can't find it, then go to the Meraki website, go to Contact Us, give us a call, and someone will direct you to the right person. So with that, let's have a little bit of a history lesson, a little bit of a recap about Cisco Meraki. So Meraki was founded in 2006 as a research project into wireless mesh technologies at MIT. Now, the founders at the time were developing this highly efficient wireless mesh to provide internet connectivity across metropolitan areas, and they presented their findings at a number of technical conferences. One of these happened to be some people from Google who were very taken with the technology, especially when we didn't have these high bandwidth 4G cellular networks, LTE and so on that we have today, and they wanted to buy some of the, some of the access points. But they didn't exist. It wasn't a product, it was just a research project. And so they said, well, how about we give you an order for a thousand access points and then you make them and deliver them once they've been created. And that helped found the company and Google was one of the first investors and first customers of the market technology. Now, one of the important things I want to briefly cover is that at the very beginning, the founders realized two important concepts, and these concepts form the core of the Meraki product development philosophy. So the first was, they were a very small uh, team, just a couple of people, and they were creating this technology that was being used by a wide variety of people, networking experts, but also just general IT people, consumers, businesses, uh, all sorts of people who weren't necessarily uh, true experts in networking technology. And they realized that quite quickly they would need to make the product very easy to use if they weren't going to spend all their time helping people install and configure this, writing hundreds or thousands of pages of documentation. They could scale much more quickly and much more efficiently if they just made the product easier to use from the beginning. So there's this core philosophy in Meraki where we try and make the product as easy to use as we possibly can. If we can remove configuration um, options and settings from the interface and automate it for you so it will do it all automatically, then we all aim to do that. 
The other thing that they realized, again, at the very beginning, was in a wireless mesh deployment, all of these devices can be spread around geographically in different areas, on tops of buildings, in different parts of the cities, um, in different floors of a building. And so it needed to be very easy to remotely manage and control. And that's something that has been a core component of all the Meraki products. And cloud was probably not the great buzzword that we have today in the marketing world in 2006, but every single Meraki product has been developed from the cloud up. And back then it was probably more likely to be called a highly scalable, highly distributed software system for the management of the Meraki devices. Now over time, uh, this proved incredibly popular, and as the company grew, year on year we decided well why don't we take these philosophies of ease of use, this cloud management and this remote connectivity and apply it to other networking areas as well. So we expanded from purely wireless to enterprise security, access and aggregation switching and mobile device management as well. And all of this is managed from one single pane of glass from a user interface called dashboard which will be the core of the demonstration a little later on and is incredibly easy to use and intuitive. Now, in December of 2012, Cisco acquired Meraki for $1.2 billion. We're now among Cisco's fastest growing portfolios, growing 100% year on year with over 75,000 unique customers and over a million Meraki network devices online today. And this was a very important acquisition for both Cisco and for Meraki. From the Meraki perspective, it was a seal of approval, a uh, resounding stamp uh, of approval from the net networking giant Cisco that cloud managed networking was one of the future technologies that we'll be using in the years to come. And that the growth that we'd seen was not a small thing, this was something that was going to take over networking across the world. And for the Cisco family, it was an acquisition not only of this great technology, but also of the way that Meraki works. So we're very small, very agile, and very software focused where we can deliver new features of functionality incredibly quickly based on customer and market demand. And because of that, Meraki has been integrated in a rather specific way where we form a separate group within Cisco known as the Cloud Networking Group, where we continue to develop Meraki technologies and cloud technologies in addition to all the other Cisco on-premise products they're used to today. So when I talk about the cloud, I often get a number of questions. What are the benefits? Why should I be interested? What are the downsides? What if it's secure? What if it breaks? And I just want to cover a few of these in this particular slide. Now we talked about simplicity and the ease of use. I want to go into that in a little more detail. And so all the Meraki products are only managed from the cloud. And this cloud infrastructure is highly distributed across multiple data centers across the world supporting tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of devices and customers and it's interacted with using the browser-based dashboard and an app that you can have on your phone or mobile device. There's none of the traditional management technologies you're used to. There is no uh, TFTP, there is no Telnet, there is no SSH, there's no FTP, there's no BootP. All of these things go away and you end up with a much simpler to deploy and manage network infrastructure. You need no servers, no virtual machines, no large uh, appliance infrastructure, no controllers. The network is much simpler, much easier to scale and deploy. And you never have to worry about the scale that you have today or the scale that you may have tomorrow. You can have one access point, 10 access points, or 10,000 access points, or 10,000 switches, and the infrastructure will scale seamlessly for you as a customer to whatever you, you need. Now, these are some great benefits of a cloud infrastructure, but what are the concerns? Well, there are concerns about the security, about data privacy, and how the uh, cloud interacts with the network infrastructure. Well, the important thing to note is that all the Meraki devices only talk to the cloud for management, configuration information, and analysis of the data on the network, and summary reporting to the cloud. So no user traffic, none of the data traversing over the network that's been forward, switched, or pass by the wireless access points is being transmitted into the cloud architecture. This is all kept with inside your network or routed and forwarded as it would do in any other network. Now, the important thing about this 
not only for data privacy, it's the fact that it allows us to scale. If we were going to take all your LAN bandwidth and put it into our cloud, this would never work. So we need, on average, one kilobit per second per Meraki network device to be able to operate this type of infrastructure, which is incredibly efficient. So if you have 100 switches, you need 100 kilobits per second of WAN bandwidth to be able to operate it. This lack of user traffic passing through the cloud allows us to provide fully HIPAA compliant networks, PCI compliant networks for retail where credit card data is of significant importance and you want to protect that. And the ability for the cloud to automate firmware updates and security updates ensure that you end up with a network that's always fully patched and at the latest levels of security without you having to proactively go and do that yourself. The other concern that people have about the cloud is the reliability. What happens if my WAN connection goes down? What happens if I can't access the cloud? How does that work? Well, the cloud itself is inherently uh, very resilient. There are multiple servers in multiple data centers that can fail over between themselves. The software system is designed to support multiple failures. And we offer a 4.9's SLA on the availability of the cloud infrastructure. So typically what you would see when there's going to be a failure is your end connection as a customer to our cloud service goes down. Well, in that instance, all your network equipment continues to operate. They operate using their existing configuration and they'll store and buffer analytical or configuration information about the network before they upload it to the cloud when their connectivity is returned. So what is the point of cloud networking beyond making your life easier? Well, making your life easier is important, and unfortunately my slides seem to have uh, been slightly twisted by PowerPoint here and don't exactly uh, line up with the right boxes, but we have billions of mobile devices now. I went to see a customer recently where they were pretty certain they were on three devices per user. They had laptops, they had a personal phone, and then they had a mixture of a secondary work phone or a tablet for their users. And they just didn't bother even plugging their laptop into the LAN anymore. All of these things were connected. So you need integrated device management, not only through mobile device management, such as Meraki Systems Manager, but also built into the network infrastructure itself. The ability to identify the types of devices, provide traffic shaping, content filtering, firewalling rules in the network is very important. And we have new business applications on the network as well. We have a, a picture here of uh, Square, someone taking a payment over a mobile device wirelessly connected. And we're seeing, for example, in retail and other businesses, the network needs to provide services for multiple types of users with very different requirements. So previously we would have people just wanting to access their email, or maybe they wanted to do uh, stock scanning or check uh, medical records. But now they also want to provide guest access. And now they also want to provide payment processing. And all of these have very different security requirements. And you don't want to have to invest in an individual infrastructure for each one. You want to be able to combine them all securely and efficiently on one network infrastructure using the built-in controls. And Meraki provides a whole host of security features that we'll hopefully be hearing about and going through very shortly. And then we have the new demands on the network in terms of video and rich media communications. I'm a big fan of YouTube and help create a lot of the YouTube content that you see come from the Meraki channel. And the latest thing is 4K. 4K definition YouTube is 30 megabits per second. So you don't need more than a handful of users before you start saturating your WAN bandwidth, your wireless network. So you need built-in controls, application layer visibility and traffic shaping so you can very easily manage that. And importantly, the reporting to know what's happening so you can then apply the correct controls. One of the sort of benefits that is not immediately obvious when you look at a cloud managed networking infrastructure is the feature velocity that we're able to provide. We're able to see how the Meraki access points have been deployed and very quickly build features for customers. We're not having to send you patches. We're not having to uh, give you a new controller. We're not having to do all the things that are traditionally associated with updates to your network infrastructure. We can provide seamless updates through the cloud. And some of the great ones that we've had on the wireless platform are, for example, our presence analytics or CMX. This allows you to do location tracking and people tracking using the wireless. And then we were able to provide this not only to some of our customers, but to all our wireless customers globally as an update to the cloud seamlessly with no downtime to their network. 
This means people who haven't traditionally had access type of data are able to take advantage of it without paying extra for it. All of the feature updates that are provided by Meraki to all our customers are included as part of your service and as part of your license. So the presence analytics became available to not only retailers who traditionally pay for this, but education, local government, healthcare, enterprises, going to look at where people are moving around the environment allows them to do things that they typically had no data for. And this wasn't just something we're able to provide for wireless. We've enhanced our security appliance, the switches, and the mobile device attachment, all with feature updates seamlessly provided through the cloud based on what our customers are asking for. Now, with that, I think I've talked more than enough, and I would love to hand over to uh, my guests, uh, Clay Morse and Brian Hardy from Next Stage. Are you with us? Yeah, we're, we're here. This is Brian Hardy and... Clay Morse. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, I would uh, like to hand over to you. I can control the slides, so uh, just tell me when to advance them, and I'll move on to the next slide. Yeah, please move on to the next slide. This is our safe harbor slide, um, kind of a requirement for next stage. Uh, if you uh, want to read more about uh, next stage, you, you can do it on our web page and uh, feel free to do so. Uh, next slide. So this is Clay. Um, just a little bit about Next Stage Medical. We were founded in 1998. Uh, we are a publicly traded company, medical device manufacturer, as well as providing dialysis services throughout the country. Um, you may know about our products, uh, but we'll go into that a little bit more. But um, if you want to learn more about our firm, uh, definitely go to www.nextstage.com. You can read about our management team led by Jeff Burbank, um, as well as more about our products. Next slide, please. We can, we can skip to the slide as well. So a little bit more about Next Stage. So as Clay mentioned earlier, uh, we're a provider of um, dialysis therapies um, as well as disposable products as well as um, clinical services as well. So Next Stage provides a, a full spectrum of dialysis solutions for our patients. And I think the slide says it better than I can, right? It's, you know, we're all about keeping dialysis simpler, making it portable, um, and enhancing pa patients' lives so that they can uh, get on with living their lives with this horrible affliction. Next slide, please. Great. So um, here you'll see uh, an example of our uh, clinics where we are actively using Meraki infrastructure as a, as a core part of our networking infrastructure. Um, at Next Stage Kidney Care, uh, one of our goals is just you know, to accommodate the lifestyle of our patients, whether they're dialyzing in the center or whether they're you know, educating them so they can go home and perform dialysis. And one of those ways that we do that um, and that Meraki empowers is things like patient internet while they're there to be able to Browse the internet as you see a gentleman in the upper right hand corner stylizing with a spouse. Next slide. So, Clay, it's George. I just, uh, inter I, I'm interested by this particular sort of use case, so I'd love to ask uh, a couple of questions if that's uh, okay. Were yeah. customers asking for wireless connectivity while they were um, having their kidney care, or was this something that you saw would be a requirement and then you decided to uh, implement before customers started asking for it? What's their reaction been to having access to the, to the internet? Sure. So, so at a really high level, um, and when you look at the design of our clinics, um, there's, a, there's a very specific intent, and it's to make that environment feel like your home, but with all of the clinical support that you would have at the state-of-the-art dialysis facilities. And so one of the things we wanted to do is to make sure we had patient entertainment options, but also connectivity. Uh, we have, you know, patients that are professionals, you know, that, that are working or that just want to be able to browse the Internet and have the flexibility to use that time while they're there, um, you know, uh, that fits with their lifestyle. 
And typically, how long is a, a patient at one of these uh, places when they're having treatment? Is it quite a long period of time? Um, well, without going into too much specifics about the therapy, um, it, it is multiple times per week, sometimes several times, uh, several hours per day. And I guess when you have customers coming in, there's a whole wide range of devices that they would want to bring with them. It's not a, a corporate-owned device that you have control over. That is correct. Um, and one way that we support that is, um, you know, lever leveraging the technology capabilities in Meraki to create a segmented network that goes directly out to the internet just for them that has no access to anything else. Um, but that allows us to apply some policies, uh, you know, to give them, you know, uh, to control somewhat what is presented in, in that shared space. Fantastic. Thanks for the uh, the extra detail. Shall I move on to the next slide? Please. Please. So at a really high level, if we hadn't discussed this before, um, you know, in our particular implementation, Next Stage Medical, uh, being a rather large company, we have Meraki deployed uh, across our manufacturing facilities as well as across our uh, 13 uh, kidney care facilities uh, throughout the country. Um, and as we've uh, began to work with this platform, uh, we've just continued to adopt it for other areas, starting with Wi-Fi all the way through to the board. Next slide, please. So if I could just ask a, a couple of questions. Do you have Marky deployed internationally now or just currently in the U.S.? Yeah, this is Brian. Um, yeah, we, we actually, on a wide scale, started deploying Meraki in Mexico. It was really our first big jump into the Meraki um, platform. We, we deployed, we replaced our wireless network in Tijuana with a, um, a complete Meraki network. And we're so impressed with the performance that we um, moved to do it at corporate. And then this last... Uh, Last quarter, we completed uh, a complete forklift of our legacy Cisco network and replaced all our switches with Meraki um, access and core switches. And how have you found it managing Meraki devices in other countries? Is there dedicated IT teams in those countries, or do you manage it all centrally? Uh, we, we, we basically have two teams that manage the Meraki infrastructure, so the Tijuana team and the Lawrence team. But we have one senior network engineer who pretty much rides herd on the whole thing. Clay has a, another network engineer that works for him, and then we have one other guy in Tijuana. But for all our locations, that's the team for networking. Okay, thank you very much. Shall I move on to the next slide? Please. So I guess these are just uh, some insights into how you ended up with Meraki. So I see that you received a free access point from one of these uh, webinars and uh, that you immediately fell in love with it. Can you can you give me a little more detail about that experience? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll actually give you a, a, an anecdote, which is when, when I, I started here at Next Stage about three and a half years ago, and uh, I think on my first day with the new boss, he brought me into his office and said, Hey, look! You got to download this app <laughs> and put it on your phone. <laughs> and it was the Meraki app, and he had me on the mobile device management on on day one. So, um, yeah, I, I've I've been involved with Meraki Meraki Next Stage from the, from the first day I started. And uh, you know, I, to be honest with you, and I, I think Clay will agree with me. We we love the product here. Um, it, it's allowed us to contain costs and um, to to meet a Number of business business requirements, you know, HIPAA compliance, and and able enabled us to save time in our deployments, um, and it, it really has saved us in terms of our monitoring, um, security. We we use a IDS product, and this allows us to quickly shut down ports when we have a bad actor out there on the network um, anywhere in the world, and that that that's a real advantage to us. So when you receive, uh, if you've uh, got the time, it'd be great to ask a couple of questions yeah. about the like when the access point turned up itself. Um, how long did it, did it take you to uh, to get it working or to to get it sort of doing some of the things you wanted to do? 
Um, you mean the free one or, or one that we've deployed today? I mean, I, 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 the free one. I was sort of going from like a, a position of not a lot of Meraki experience, like that very first initial uh, use of the product. What what was that like? Did you have to read a lot of documentation? What, what, were you able to get it running with just the sort of existing networking knowledge that you had? What was that like? Yeah, I, I think it's more of the latter. Um, it's kind of a plug and play. You know, once you register your device, um, you're off to the races. So, play it. Absolutely. So, um, we were looking at a competing product. This was before Meraki was acquired by Cisco. Um, and we were. Uh, Implementing that other wireless uh, technology, and uh, our, our VP came to us and said, "Give Meraki a try." Um, we literally uh, received the gear, had it installed. Um, within, you know, once we had an opportunity to evaluate the technology, uh, the install itself was was really straightforward. The portal was straightforward, and um, as our second bullet says, you know, we've got we've got very talented network engineers. Um, and these guys said this is a great platform, and so we supported them in that decision, and we uh, and we haven't regretted it. Fantastic, and I can see that uh, you've uh, obviously got to do uh, a lot of thinking about HIPAA compliance. Can you give me any insight into how Meraki has made being HIPAA compliant easier, or is there anything specific you would like to highlight in relation to using Meraki to be HIPAA compliant? Well, I think it supports it in a lot of ways. Um, one thing that I would ask that we put up for the attendees is there's some great documentation out there. Um, you have a white paper on HIPAA compliance. I think every company uh, needs an approach to risk analysis that's going to be slightly uh, specific to their company. Um, but in terms of the flexibility of the platform, uh, the ease of which to, um, to uh, deploy uh, networks, uh, the ability to back it, uh, with an AD so you can support the initiatives of having you know, a dedicated username and password identity for your wireless LAN. I mean, there, there are just a number of areas as you look at the technical safeguards, uh, security safeguards that you would want to, uh, that, you would, that Meraki definitely supports. But I would definitely recommend the, uh, the white paper HIPAA compliance for the wireless LAN as a starting point for those who are, um, who are trying to solve that problem and understand how Meraki helps. Fantastic, thank you. Well, what we'll try and do is we'll try and put in the uh, text area in the chat uh, the link to the uh, HIPAA white paper. So for those of you who want to have access to it, it should be pretty straightforward for you to get hold of it. Uh, great. Shall I move on to the next slide? Please. So um, well, I think one of the great things about your deployment is that you have really sort of embraced the uh, the whole Meraki portfolio, what we like to call Meraki full stack, uh, in terms of not just wireless but also security switching and mobile device management. And we've got some uh, great examples of how you've used those here. Is there any that you'd particularly like to highlight? Uh, maybe, for example, the mobile device management or uh, the, the the new switch deployment. Yeah, I, I to be honest, I'd like to just touch on the, the security appliances. Um, what we found when we were deploying the wireless network was that uh, hooking the um, wireless network up to a Meraki security appliance um, simplified the Active Directory integration um, as well as um, uh, IP management on the, the mobile devices. and um, the other thing that we found with using the security appliances is that we've created a um, full corporate mesh between all our locations. So um, in the past, we were using another product that required a fair amount of maintenance and upkeep um, in order to keep those uh, keep that mesh up and active. And since we've gone to Meraki, it's pretty much fire and forget. And, you know, we check on it every now and then, but. I think all clay centers are, are in a mesh, and, and so are all of my um, corporate locations. So that that was a big win for us. Um, you know, if we have an MPLS problem, uh, communication over um, our WAN um, continues over the internet seamlessly. 
I, I have to say I'm personally a huge fan of the auto VPN having had to configure it on other devices in my career and putting aside a good part of my day to get that working and now it's just a, a drop down with a couple of options and you're, you're done in uh, one or two minutes. I just really love that time saving. So hopefully we'll get a chance to look through that in the demonstration uh, towards the end of this session. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to go through on this slide or shall I move on to the next one? Uh, we can move on to the next slide. So to just look at the um, the result uh, that you've achieved with your Marquee uh, deployments, um, we've got a couple of sort of uh, highlights here. Um, I know one of the things that a lot of customers find very interesting because they don't necessarily have a, a lot of that previously is the analytics and the like insights into the network traffic that's operating on. Uh, the network, and I did sort of allude to it earlier when I was introducing the market technology. All that information you get about the analytics allows you to make better decisions about what to do with the rules and controls in the network. Uh, do you want to uh, tell me a little bit more about how you've been able to use that or how it's been useful to you in terms of the analysis of the, the network data? Sure, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take that actually from uh, from two perspectives. The first being just your typical capacity planning, um, you know, as, as your, the platform makes it really simple to determine where uh, bandwidth is being consumed, um, to really quickly be able to drill into that so that you can make decisions around, you know, is this an issue of how the services are being used or is it an issue of us just not having enough capacity. Um, great tools for QoS to be able to control um, as well the, the types of traffic and the prioritization of that on the network. Um, but one of the interesting things and experiences that I had is, you know, typically uh, IT infrastructure is not very uh, exciting when you're in a business meeting, right? And so one of the most uh, interesting anecdotes I had was in a you know, couple of years back as we had adopted this was being able to pull up and show, uh, you know, uh, based on cell phones and visibility of people's phones, be able to get a sense of foot traffic at a location and put that in front of my marketing folks. Um, you know, we'd already done that, but that really got them engaged around, wow, what else can IT tell us about, you know, about this environment um, beyond the services we provide to our patients. Um, so it, it's cool in that it allows us to kind of start to have an, uh, a conversation with other aspects of the business. Um, in terms of deep network insights, uh, from that dashboard, you can drill down all the way down to the application level to tell what you know, what applications are consuming your bandwidth, um, where are people, uh, and particularly down to the device level, what, you know, what applications are they accessing, what protocols are they using, and, um, you know, you can make decisions at that point. Um, it, the platform itself, is just, it's, it's pretty powerful um, in that respect. Um, in terms of remote monitoring and troubleshooting, um, I think the one thing that we don't have on this slide that I, I think Brian would appreciate as well as I do is just accountability with our staff. Um, we've got a crew that's managing this moving infrastructure, and the great thing about it is whether you're a core um, network engineer or just a member of the support staff, if a device, you know, if a chain request is executed, that notification list shoots out to the entire team, and you're able to see changes as they're implemented, um, which is a fantastic feature so that there's no surprise from your help desk team, you know, and you're coordinating across your business. Uh, the platform supports that, um, which is not present in all in, in, in other competitive tool or other competing tools. That, that's uh, some great information. Thank you very much uh, uh, for adding that, Clay. Um, shall I move on to the next slide? Wait. So I guess this is um, a great segue from your from your anecdotes about the marketing team having an interest in some of the analytics and the information that you had available from the Marquee dashboard. And it's not purely a, a technical tool for network engineers. It actually offers value to other parts of the business as well. Um, I guess just a brief insight into the CMX location analytics, which I, I introduced earlier in the, the slide deck and it's been available to everyone. Is this something that you would have looked at buying 
separately or as like an additional cost if it wasn't included uh, by default with the Meraki technology? Uh, this was something that was, um, I would say, it was an unexpected feature um, as we were beginning to delve into uh, the dashboard. So this did not supplement, this didn't take away, uh, you know, in terms of us looking at another product. Um, but it definitely was able to layer into the set of tools that the um, that we can provide to our marketing teams. I, I've seen some uh, some great examples of how people have used this to understand, um, for example, uh, whether or not they should open earlier because there's there's more demand that they're not addressing earlier or, or later. Or, do they need to change the staffing levels in a particular place because they can see that there's a lot of people there more than they had expected and this gives them tangible data rather than just anecdotal data that the site is very busy. Um, Absolutely. One of the, the, the great anecdotes that you have here is about the uh, dashboard mobile app and this is something I'm again very fond of. Uh, it's a both an Android and an iOS, iOS app, which allows you to, to manage your network infrastructure, uh, your Meraki network infrastructure. Um, some of the, the features that I'm particularly uh, fond of are, for example, you can scan an access point or a switch or a security appliances barcode and automatically deploy it into your network using your mobile device. But you've got a great story here of uh, how, it was, how it was used in your environment. Do you want to give us a little more detail? Absolutely. So um, we may not have discussed this before, but we effective, when we adopted Meraki, we looked at the MDM component of it, the mobile device management piece for, um, was one of the first pieces we looked at. And so a, a senior member, a member of the IT team uh, was reached out as they were out on a mountain hunting in, uh, in, in, in Colorado or hiking at the top of the mountain um, while they were hunting uh, and literally uh, was able to wipe a device from their cell phone on the top of a mountain in Colorado. Um, and I think that was really one of those stories that said, this is an incredibly powerful platform for the MDM component alone. Um, but the ease of which, um, and this is something that I think that it's, it, we can't uh, talk about enough, is it's the ease of interacting with the tools. Um, you really can open up the platform and, and feel like, okay, I understand where to go. The usability is there. It's not, uh, you know, you've seen other user interfaces where it's, you know, you're going down 20 menus to try to find f functionality within the platform. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the app on the iOS or Android is, um, is very similar in that. It keeps everything right within your hands. If I wake up in the morning and I want to take a look at how my networks are doing, um, I can do all that within the first few minutes of popping open my phone. I, I am I'm a big believer in having this sort of very easy access to it. I mean I can't even imagine trying to SSH or Telnet from my phone to a traditional networking device. And I've heard similar stories uh, from other customers. One who someone called him to say that there was uh, an access point that wasn't working, and he logged into his app on, while he was on a train, and he saw that the access point had turned off and he knew that the person in that area was very um, very keen on unplugging the access points. <laughs> so he told him yeah. to just plug it back in, that's why it wasn't working. <laughs> yeah. Let's move I, I, on. Sure. Oh, sorry. I no, gonna, no, sorry, I, no. I interrupted you. No, it's okay. I was just going to say, particularly in the, the MX series of devices, um, if any of our folks have ever had to, uh, you know, pull up PuTTY SSH into, uh, you know, a switch or try to read, uh, you know, firewall rules or something like that, um, this platform just makes that much simpler, right? You can do a lot of that from your phone or from a web-enabled device. And I think that um, that's just amazing, especially from the, from the impact that it has on our staff's life. There is an issue. Um, they're into and understanding what's going on in seconds, if not, you know, most minutes, as opposed to in the past. Um, you know, they're getting into a system within 10, 15 minutes after they brought up the laptop and everything else. So it helps us to be really responsive to the business when we do have issues. Fantastic. Well, let's move on to the last couple of slides. And I, I really want to make sure we save time for some Q&A and also to demonstrate a couple of things you you mentioned, such as the, uh, the also VPN and uh, some of the uh, client wiping capabilities. Um, we're just sort of wrapping up with some of the use cases here. One of the things we haven't talked about is the uh, 
uh, teleworking with the the Z1 or as my uh, my colleagues keep reminding me Z1 uh, for VPN access. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about how you've implemented remote working with Maraki? Sure. Um, so this really was a, a case of where we um, uh, we have you know we have a distributed workforce, um, not the clinics, but really uh, you know knowledge workers that are working throughout the country, and wanting to provide them a higher level of service. Um, we were looking at how we could have access to all those devices because typically in a person's home, you know, they would um, they connect from a laptop, you know, connect in through the VPN client on their on that uh, particular device. And what the Z1 allowed to do is one, um, be able to provide us direct network access, manage the connectivity from our presentation of our network in that in that environment. Um, but the one of the great features is. Uh, allowing uh, people as they're moving around to have cellular backed up connectivity and just seamless uh, failover between the cellular back and, um, and uh, you know, Ethernet, but at a cost that is just amazing. Um, without half of the complexity that you would have if someone had like a MiFi and trying to make it all work. Um, so it, we've, we've had a lot of wins there uh, with our remote workers and uh, it's a seamless process for them to go from you know, office environment to a managed home environment uh, using that platform. Fantastic. Um, uh, uh, what I'll just add is we'll we'll put a link in the chat box to a blog post that was on our blog very recently, which goes into exactly what you've described, which is how to use the Z1 and also having that cellular connection with a USB dongle plugged into it as an option as well. So for anyone listening who wants to see a bit more about that and how it works, that's a great place to start. So Kat's going to go post that in the chat box for us uh, very shortly. Um. I think the only other component that I, uh, that we have, well, there's a bunch of wins on the slide, um, but I think we've touched on everything except for the scheduled automatic firmware updates. Um, you've got to, when we do the demo, got to show the home screen, which um, in the network overview shows you the state of all of your devices, whether they're firmware updates that are due, um, and the ability to schedule them at a specific time and do this within minutes. Um, it's very powerful. It, uh, you don't have to worry about not knowing whether you've got an unpatched server with, you know, um, as you have that issue in some other competitor uh, environments. Fantastic. Well, I think that leads us very nicely into uh, the final slide and uh, this great quote here. And um, I, I think it can often be overlooked until you've really seen the benefits of it the ease of use. It's great having products or technology with loads of features and functions, but when it just takes so much time and effort to make them useful to you and to the business, you just, my personal experience is you don't end up, uh, you don't end up using them that often. So um, what I'll do is I'll pause the screen now and I will switch to the demonstration. And what would be great is uh, uh, if uh, you, Clay and Brian, you sort of guide me through some of the things you think I should show. I'm going to start by looking at that uh, automatic firmware update that you recommended, um, uh, Clay, and we'll go have a look at the overview page where it shows you all the, all the software updates, uh, whether or not you're up to date or not in one page, and then we'll go from there. Just checking in, George. How how's the login going? So you should be able to see my screen now. Uh, can everyone uh, see? 
uh, hopefully uh, there should be a, a nice view of uh, the Meraki office in San Francisco there. If I switch to that satellite view, um, there we go. And if I open up this uh, screen, we can now see all of the, uh, <laughs> the network devices which are offline in our network. <laughs> Maybe there's something bad going on there. Um, in fact, what's interesting about this screen is you can see all this red stuff and, oh, disaster has struck. But these are actually um, a recent deployment of uh, our Z1 Teleworker disaster recovery setup to uh, extended members of the support team. So these have been configured and packaged, but they haven't yet gone out to uh, these people's homes. So you can see all these red and all these horrible bars and you think a disaster has struck bad because I know what devices they are, uh, I'm not too concerned. Um, and uh, we can go and look at some of these uh, other networks and see, okay, they're running fine, or, or maybe actually some of them have got some intermittent problems. And unsurprisingly, the one which is for RMAs has some intermittent problems. So uh, it's, it's sort of interesting to see the representative uh, nature of, of what's happening in your network. So. Um, uh, Clay and Brian, please feel free to drive me. If you don't have a particular thing that you think we should look at, then uh, I can make some suggestions based on what we've discussed. But if there's anything. No, absolutely. I was going to say absolutely. So on this screen, just from the top, one of the things that that we've found has been really helpful, and um, senior the principal engineer on my team uh, began implementing is tagging of devices um, into groups. Um, when you have tagging implemented, so at the top of the screen, if you begin to search, um, just typing in everything, you know, this, this entire view is dynamic and will zoom down. So if you're in an MDM environment and you've got a phone number, you can start typing it in and zap down to that particular client. Um, it's an incredibly powerful feature. Um, and it's getting better and better with new releases of updates to the portal. Um, uh, so in terms of usage, in terms of the tagging, it, 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 it's a really nice feature. Um, if you go into, uh, if we can look at any of the, um, the MDM views, there's some great content in there. Okay, um, I think I have uh, one we can look at. Uh, one of the other things I'd like to sort of just add, that these sure. tags for the network names, uh, they can be used to assign administrative roles and privileges. So you can set... Uh, uh, members of uh, your team to only have access to certain sites, if that's the sites that they're responsible for, based on the tags as well, uh, which is quite convenient. Um, so let's go and search for uh, Corp here, and um, we will go down and uh, try and to think. Yeah, this is the one that we have all our devices registered in. So here we go, loads of devices uh, loading up now. And um, uh, yeah, we have a huge mix of Apple devices, Apple devices enrolled using DEP, Android devices, Windows, desktops, all sorts of things. Fantastic. So something that um, is relevant particularly to this screen and it talks about tagging is um, you can use tagging for identifying devices, you can use tagging for, as I said, doing rules-based um, provisioning of profiles to devices. Um, it's, it's a pretty powerful platform. But on this screen, you've got a number of options. So um, you know you can see general information about the devices. There's a pull down in the top corner where you can click from exactly. You can pull in additional calls. So you can pull phone numbers. Um, you can tell if antivirus spyware uh, passcodes are on devices. Are they compliant? Um, and this goes across the whole class of devices from mobile devices all, all the way through to, uh, you know, Windows and Mac desktops. Um, it's a pretty powerful feature for us for you to, uh, to use. There's a security compliance report that you can schedule from this tool and hand that off to your, uh, to your desktop support teams to help make sure that you're keeping things compliant as well. Um, what else do we have here? Maybe we can go in, in, go in and have a look at a, a user's iPad here. So here's one that we have, um, and this gives you an idea of some of the information and the tools available. So we've got the erase device or selectively wipe the device, which is which is useful if you um, want to remove, for example, all the corporate information and emails and applications, but the user's own device, so you don't want to wipe their uh, photos or their Angry Birds high score, for example. Correct. 
Um, and you, you also mentioned the tag side of things. So we've got that tag section up here. Uh, but one of the other areas that is uh, uh, really useful is the auto tags. So this is where systems manager like checks uh, the device to see if it meets certain things. So these can be geofencing, so that's location. They can be time. Uh, it can be the type of the device linked to Active Directory and the owner. And it can also be their security policy. So here we're checking to see if the device is jailbroken, has it had its passcode set, does it meet our security policies, yes it has or no it hasn't, and then it can add or remove features or apps or functionality based on these automatic tags. So it's not just this static thing, you can uh, also have it automatically change based on what's going on, preventing the IT team, IT team having to go and do that manually themselves when they get an alert, Some quite a large portion of it can be automated for you. So um, how about we go and have a look at the, the MX security appliance and at the auto VPN, because that's one of the things that we uh, discussed as being uh, particularly useful, especially with the, the full mesh functionality, which is just a couple of clicks. So uh, I will bring that page up. Oh, dear, oh dear. Let's try again. Uh, and we'll go and have a talk about uh, how the auto VPN uh, works and what sort of benefits you've had from it. <coughs> So the great thing for those of you who are uh, less familiar with how the Meraki Auto VPN works is that every single Meraki device talks to the Meraki cloud infrastructure. And so the cloud is used to set up all the VPN connections. So it knows all the remote IP addresses, it knows all the keys, it knows all the encryption protocols that need to be used. And if any of those changes, it dynamically updates all the sites. So this means it's very easy to include a site that has a dynamic IP address um, without a lot of hassle because when its IP changes, the Meraki Cloud sees its change and then it updates all the other corresponding sites. So up the top here, so let's say I wanted to configure a site-to-site -site VPN. So I've got it currently set to disabled. I could choose either a split tunnel or a full tunnel. I'm going to choose split tunnel here. And then using this section that says connect directly to all VPN peers, this will automatically create a fully mesh VPN topology between every other site I have. That could be five or 50 or 500 plus MX locations, all that will be connected. And each one of those is an individual VPN setup. And that would be really quite a, quite a lot of configuration if you're having to do that manually. You need to choose the subnets that you want at this site to be made available at the other sites. So I don't know if you want to add anything to that, uh, Clay and Brian, in terms of uh, what I've already said. No, I think the, um, the one thing that we are uh, constantly evaluating is um, in terms of the performance of the mesh as, as connectivity changes on the individual nodes, you do have a, um, effectively, it, it, it touches all the other participants in a mesh, so you can make decisions um, where that's valuable, and you can also have it where you just have the, uh, an individual VPN tunnel from a node if you know it's on a spotty network or things like that. So the, the platform does provide you a lot of flexibility with how you um, deploy VPNs. And I guess one of the things that uh, I would add uh, as an area of interest for yourselves and for anyone else on today's session is that we had uh, something called a Meraki quarterly webinar um, a few weeks to a month ago where the product managers for all the Meraki products talk about the latest and greatest that has just been released or is up and coming. And there's this fantastic new uh, monitoring, monitoring and reporting tool coming for the VPN, which uh, has this lovely graphical user interface that shows you all the performance for your mesh links, all in this one interface. So I highly recommend if you're interested to see what's coming in the future or not too distant future, have a look at that recording on our YouTube channel and it, it goes through what that will look like uh, in not too soon. Okay, so I can see we're running uh, close to the hour. The last thing that I want to go into before we have a bit of time for Q&A is the sort of analytics of uh, what's happening on the network, the information in terms of uh, data and so on. I mean, how often do you use this 
our clients page. Uh, my personal experience is this is probably where I start my journey in the Meraki dashboard because it gives me all the information as to what I then need to do when I'm configuring in any of the other pages. Is, is that the same sort of experience you have or do you use it in a different way? I think we use this in a, in a, in a slightly different way. Um, the, um, I think our network engineers are, are looking at uh, slightly different views and viewing the equipment and seeing how that's performing. This actually is really helpful for our um, desktop support team to be able to quickly go in and determine uh, the network that the client's connecting to if they're having particular issues working with something, um, accessing a certain website or, or protocol. They can see that. Uh, from time to time, I might get a call uh, to say, hey, uh, can you pull up this particular device and check out, you know, do we have a lot of YouTube going on, as you can see there, <laughs> um, and, or things like that. Um, so um, it, it's a pretty powerful platform for that. But I particularly, I use this when I want to look at patterns of, of, uh, of bandwidth consumption. You know, um, it helps me to really quickly go in and see, uh, do, we, do we see a lot of utilization um, in certain areas where we need to kind of bolt things down. Yeah, George, on, on my side of the house, more sort of operations oriented, I actually like the topology view the most simply because it lets me see my entire network um, in a single pane. And if I have a problem on a switch, you know, like you see where the... That you got the yellow one there. Yellow, exactly. I can see everything, you know, very quickly and zero in on where the problem might be. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this, having had to draw in Visio or uh, other forms of uh, tool network diagrams, which then change and change again and change again. And uh, slowly your document becomes less and less accurate to the point where someone has it to you and you're like, well, this is no use at all. Um, but because it's been dynamically built by the Meraki dashboard, uh, you can... Uh, always be uh, confident in its accuracy and if you still want that paper version and I did this a couple of days ago I just went up here I printed it off on our large format printer and now I've got a big one I can hang on the wall and draw draw pen marks and other things on when we're planning network uh, network changes so uh, I'm a big fan of this feature as well well we have just a few minutes left and we do have some good questions coming in so I'd, I'd like to uh, turn those over to you uh, Hi, and Brian. We've got a couple from existing uh, Meraki user. Uh, we've got one that uh, asks, how do you handle uh, your logging requirements? Um, they have uh, a desire for lots of real-time logs, and they haven't necessarily been able to get what they wanted out of the setup in the Meraki dashboard today. Is that something that you have configured using the syslog integration, or what's your What's your method for managing uh, logging and that type of information with your Meraki deployment? Yeah, we use a, a very similar solution. So um, we, we gather all the logs from <coughs> all of our devices, the Lucy devices as well as our Meraki devices into a single um, service assurance platform and then um, monitor based on that. It sends out alerts um, based on severity to the different teams within in my department. So yeah, okay. I, I'd, I'd agree with the, the poster that the, uh, the reporting uh, on that syslogging could be a little bit, could be improved. But. Yeah. So I think it's one of these things that we have uh, created a trade between um, the level of data that you can get in the Meraki dashboard could be so high that it adds some uh, some extra complexity. So we do offer this integration, as I'm showing here, with Syslog. But the other thing I want to uh, bring up is there's been very recent changes in the last couple of weeks to improve the ease of use of uh, the event log. So if you haven't looked recently, then you may not have uh, seen it. Um, but there used to be a number of checkboxes up the top here. And as we add more and more options, that became uh, excessively complex in trying to choose what you wanted. And thanks to our ability to update the product very quickly, we now have this new way of picking different options and we've added loads of new options that you can go into very quickly and easily filter down the types of events that you're after which previously wasn't possible. So uh, for the, the person asking that question, if you haven't seen this, please check out and let us know what you think using the Make-A-Wick 
uh, make a wish box. Um, we have a question about the uh, Teleworker and Z1 and MX configuration. Have you been using the template functionality at all for the deployment of that, or have you been configuring those individually? Uh, uh, on the kidney care side, we are using those. Um, it definitely helped accelerate uh, the configuration, uh, deployment of devices for, for new sites. Um, so it's been working well. Okay, and we also had a question about third-party VPN devices. Um, so the Maraki Auto VPN is very simple and easy to set up, but it only works with Maraki devices. You can configure third-party devices. Is, ha is that something you've investigated or done at all? Uh, we have. Uh, can't go into all the details, but definitely we've, um, we've connected with a variety of, of, uh, of other types of endpoints, and it's performed very well, including cloud providers. That's a that's a, a great point, which is uh, we support uh, standard IPsec third-party VPNs, but we've recently added some templates for uh, cloud providers such as Azure and Amazon Web Services, which you can now select uh, from the non-Maraki VPN peer section within the Maraki dashboard. Now we have come to the hour, it's 12 o'clock. Uh, Clay and Brian, thank you very much for the uh, great insight you've given us into how you're using the Maraki technology. It was uh, great talking to you. Is there anything you would like to uh, finish with or summarize before we end today's webinar? Uh, no, I just appreciate the opportunity. I think for uh, teams that are out there evaluating uh, this technology, um, it's a great converged platform. Um, you've got one vendor, uh, they're supporting the tools, and if you've got branch deployments uh, all the way up to corporate infrastructure, it's working for us. So definitely something to evaluate. Not saying you won't have to have other tools to support areas where they're weak, but um, every single few releases, they're, they're closing the gap. So um, it's a great platform. Yeah, I agree with what Clay says, and thank you, George and, and Kat, for, for having us uh, on the webinar. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you again. And for those who are still on the line, my recommendations for the next steps are you're going to get this free access point if you give us a call so you can try some of these things for yourself. But if you're interested in other marketing technology, such as switching, security, all the mobile device management, make sure you have a, a conversation with your marketing representative when you give them a call and can arrange a no-cost trial for any of that equipment so you can try it for yourself. The other thing I would suggest is if you go to our blog, uh, maraki.cisco.com forward slash blog, this is our uh, most up-to-date news portal from Maraki. We talk about all sorts of new things that are coming and new features that have been released. And if you sign up as a subscriber this month, the month of August, then you're in with a chance of winning one of five Z1 teleworkers. So thank you very much everyone for attending today's session and have a great rest of your day.